Hello everybody and welcome to a new video on this channel. Today I will show you how to implement a moving average filter in GNU Octave. So what is a moving average filter? I think all of you know what, uh, what it means to calculate uh, the average of, for example, a time series or signal. And a moving average filter is a filter that you can apply to a, to a signal to calculate the average over a certain window that you shift through the whole signal and so yeah whenever it comes to noisy data this is a very powerful tool or a very simple tool to perform some kind of denoising so imagine you you have a noisy waveform and um, you want to smooth that waveform then a moving average filter is a simple way of doing it so the moving average filter is look at it at the window as a window so we have a let's say a window of a certain length let's say five samples and um, we shift this window through our noisy signal and uh, for each window we calculate the average value of the signal and at the end we will get the smoothed curve and so let's directly head over to our Octave workspace to demonstrate it. And so we start our script by typing clear all, clearing all workspace variables, close all to close all maybe open windows. And then let's um, implement the, exam the example that I just mentioned. So we, we define um, a signal, therefore we need a sampling frequency, let's say 18 kilohertz. And let's say we have a fundamental frequency of our signal of, I don't know, 500 hertz. So, uh, a high oversampling value, then the curve looks uh, smoother. So then to plot the sine wave or to generate a sine wave, we need a time domain vector. We start with zero and we increment it by one divided by the sampling frequency. And let's say we want to um, plot only 10 periods of our signal, then it's 10 divided by F. So this means that we um, only generate a signal, uh, including 10 periods of our signal with the fundamental frequency of 500 Hertz. And then we subtract uh, uh, one sample that we have an even number of samples. And then we generate our signal, let's call it X. It's a, let's say it's a sine wave, two times pi times F times T. So this is our sine wave. And now let's um, add some noise to it. So um, let's call it XN for X noise, where we take our signal X and we add um, random numbers to it, normal distributed with the same size of X. So run N will create um, a, random, a random number value vector with the same size of our vector X. Oh, here it's multiplied plus. And let's um, scale it to, let's say one uh, 0 0.2 times run N. So we now add a random vector with an amplitude of 0 0.2. And now let's plot the signals just to have a look. So we use a subplot. So subplot, let's say two times one times one. The first subplot, we plot T versus X, our original signal. Turn on the grid because it looks nicer. Let's use grid minor, a uh, smaller grid. We add an X label. Let's call it sample. Samples and Y label is the amplitude. Amplitude. So, and then we go to the next subplot window. It's number two, because we have two rows, one column, the first subplot, the second subplot. And we can just copy this here add it here and we change here x to x n for for the noise signal and now let's plot it 
and have a look how it looks like. I will show to you the output window. So, uh, where is it? Uh, here. So, here you can see um, in the, uh, the upper subplot, the original signal, our generated sine wave, fundamental frequency of 500 Hertz, 10 periods of the signal. And at the, at the second subplot, you can see the noisy signal where we have added a random noise vector or a, red, a vector containing um, normal distributed random numbers scaled by 0.2 and yeah that's the result and now what we want to do is to smooth this second curve here um, and that's where the moving average filter comes into the game so what we what we're gonna do is we create a filter that has a certain window uh, a window means that um, a buffer of a certain amount of samples let's say five and then we shift this buffer or this window over the signal and at each position we calculate the average win uh, the average value um, from this five samples inside this window and at the at the end or hopefully we will get a smoother curve okay so let's go back and implement the filter okay so therefore because we want to shift this this window of our filter over the signal let's use a for loop uh, first of all let's define our um, number of uh, or the filter the, the length of our window let's say five five samples n equals five and then we shift this window over our signal this means that we have a for loop with our variable idx for, for index. And we have to start at the position five. You will see later on why. And then we go up to the length of our noisy signal, xn. So. So now let's define our filtered signal. Let's call it xf for x filtered. X filtered will have the same, uh, the same length as, as uh, our signal x or xn so we create a, a vector filled with zeros with the same size of x or xn so and now each point or each sample of our uh, filtered signal x f from idx will now be the average value over the window at this position the window takes five samples so um, to calculate the average value we will sum up these uh, the five samples inside the window and divide it by five so we sum our our noisy signal from idx minus n plus one up to idx imagine or play around with it this here will give you um, the uh, corresponding samples. That's the reason why we start at five or at n and not at one, because then we would go to negative values. And imagine you, you we have uh, our starting value will be five, five minus five is zero plus one. So we start at one and we go up to five. So our first sample will contain um, our first sample of our output signal will contain the average value over the first five samples of our noise signal and then we divide it by n this is the average average calculation so and that's also where where the moving comes in because we using this for loop we shift this window over our whole signal Okay, let's also plot it. Therefore, we enlarge our subplot. At the moment, we only show uh, two windows. We now add one more to plot our filtered signal. So, number three, and here our third window. 
xf and let's add a title to each window. This is our uh, smooth signal or our average filtered signal. Here we have our noisy signal. Noisy is a signal. And our first plot will be our original signal. So, original signal. Okay, let's fire it up to see how it looks like. Ah, okay. I will show it to you in one second. Okay, here it is. So, the first of our three subblocks um, contains the original signal. Then we have here our input data, our noisy signal, for example, our measurement signal. And here you can see our smooth moving ever smooth signal using a mover, moving average filter with the length of five samples inside the uh, window. You could also enlarge it, then you would get a smoother curve. Let's say 10, you can also do it for 10 samples. Let's go back. Let's change our uh, window length to 10 and plot it again. So, and here it is. Here you can see the smooth signal using a filter length or a window of 10. Look at this um, uh, zero values here at the beginning. Uh, this is the, the delay caused by our filter, 10 samples. So this is only one way of designing or implementing a moving average filter. So if you, if, if you design a filter, a digital filter, um, the, the, the powerful tool of designing a filter is uh, the mathematical description using uh, the set transform. And I don't want to go into the details, but um, a moving average filter is a really uh, simple filter and also the, the set transform of it. But the set transform shows us um, that, okay, a moving average filter in time domain is a rectangle, meaning because of the Fourier chorus um, pondens, that it's a sync function uh, in the frequency domain, meaning, okay, a moving average filter is a low pass filter. It's a very simple low pass filter. So a moving average filter is a low pass filter. You can play around with it. It's a good exercise to uh, train your DSP skills. And okay, if we are able to describe a filter by its set transform, um, then we are also able to use the filter command in, in GNU Octave to implement the filter. And the set transform of a moving average filter is quite simple. It's um, it will result only in a vector of ones. I will show it to you. So our filter, let's call it filter kernel, FK. It's only a vector once and uh, the number of ones is equal to the length of the window. So we have um, N samples. So we, we create a vector with N ones in it and each one is scaled by one divided by N. So um, this is our filter kernel, and then we can use our filter command. So um, how we name it? Um, let's call it XF GNU for GNU Octave. Again, we um, we allocate our memory with with the vector that contains only zeros. So, and then it's quite simple. So XF G and U, XF G and U will be, can be used using the filter command. So the filter command expects two um, um, vectors, A and B, describing the coefficients of an infinite response filter or um, finite response filter. And using only one vector like here, uh, the, the vector containing ones means that we have implemented our moving average filter using a finite impulse response filter, FIR filter, 
quite simple. And so we pass our filter to it, FK, and a one for our denominator. And we pass the signal that we want to filter to the filter command, which is XN. Okay. And then we plot this, um, this result to our manual implementation to see what's the difference. So plot t, come, t versus x, f, g, and u. So again, what we now have done is we've implemented the moving average filter using a for loop and a sliding uh, window uh, over our noisy signal and um, calculating the average value inside that window at every position of the noisy signal. The second um, um, approach of implementing it is using uh, the set transform and uh, the set transform tells us that okay the uh, moving average filter in finite impulse response representation is only a vector containing ones and these ones are scaled by by the number of samples uh, uh, taken into account for the calculation and so it's only filter and we pass fk our filter kernel and our noisy signal so let's fire it up Oh, there is an error, n undefined, where is it undefined, oh, yeah, so let's define our uh, filter length at the top of the script, okay, and let's see the difference between our manual approach and the filter command approach and as you can see they are equal the only difference is at the beginning because we have implemented our for loop um, that we start at sample number 10 in this case and so that means that the first 10 samples are zero we could um, avoid the situation if we pre-initialize our filter with a certain value. This is what the filter command is doing. And, but after the, this delay caused by our uh, moving average window, um, the result from our um, manual implementation and the, uh, the filter command output are exactly the same because this is what, what's happening inside. A moving average filter is only window that you slide over your signal and, and um, average over this window at every certain, at every single um, uh, sample position. So yeah, that's it. That's the matching magic of a moving average filter. It's a quite simple filter to perform signal smoothing. And I also I already told you that okay. You can implement this filter using the set transform. If you're interested, I will post you some uh, mathematical descriptions below the video, because there's also the possibility to implement such a moving average filter in a recursive way. And then we have an infinite impulse response filter where our uh, filter command here also needs a second vector describing our A coefficients. But this is too much for this video, maybe for the next time. Um, I hope you enjoyed. Give me a like, thumbs up. Bye bye, see you the next time.